Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. I hope you and your families are well and healthy. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jonathan and I am one of the kids pastors here at Bethel. My wife and I both serve as co-kids pastors. Today, I have the privilege of leading our daily devotion and I am excited to share with you what God has placed on my heart. Can you believe that we are in only week four of this house arrest? I mean. Um, shelter, uh, restriction, whatever it is that they're calling it. How many of you feel like it's been four months? I have to be honest, these past four weeks have not been the easiest. Think about it. Having a three-year-old and trying to record videos for Sunday doesn't really work. And there are a whole lot of other things that don't really work with our stay-at-home restrictions. And I'm sure you can relate in some shape or form. But it got me thinking, there are two ways of looking at this whole shelter restriction. And I am reminded of a Bible story that I'm sure we've heard a hundred times in church and or maybe even told it to our kids over a hundred times. And the story is David and Goliath. If you want to read about this story, you can find it in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Don't worry, I'm not going to read it in its entirety, but I want to highlight some verses that stick out to me. Before I start reading, I want to give you some backstory. So David was a boy. He was the youngest of eight brothers. His dad was Jesse. David's profession was a shepherd. And so he was at home since he was the youngest. And his brothers, they were off fighting in the army for King Saul. And at the time David was home, his father, Jesse, would send him like a care package to his brothers with food and stuff for the captains. And uh, what was going on at this time was the Israelites were lined up against the Philistines. But the Philistines, they had this secret weapon. And it wasn't that tiny, it was actually really big. It was a giant, his name was Goliath. And he would go out every single day for 40 days and 40 nights and taunt the Israelites and talk about their God and how bad bad he is. And so uh, back at home where David was, uh, David's dad, Jesse had said, all right, son, it's time for you to go visit your brothers. I'm sending you a care package. And so he went and as he got there, he noticed something, something that was different. And let's read right here. First uh, Samuel chapter 17, verse 23. It says he, David, was talking with them. Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance and David heard it when whenever the Israelites saw the man they all fled from him in great fear so David was like dude what's going on why why isn't anybody going up against this guy like he is he is wrong he's going up are saying bad things about our God we should not stand for this and the word got up to the king that someone was talking about fighting him. And so here he is in, in King Saul's court and he's asking him. And, and that's in verse 32. And it says, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you're not able to go against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or bear came to, to, and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by the hair and struck it and killed it. Yeah. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. This Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. Today, I have titled my devotional Perspective. And my question to you is, what is your perspective on our situation that's going on right now? Now that we are live streaming our kids' services, I have to do all the editing, which takes a lot of my time. And with a three-year-old who wants my undevoted attention, it's hard to get work done. I'll be honest, all I could think about is, man, if only he could be in daycare, I can get things done. And I'm sure some of you can relate. But then I remembered something, or God actually 
helped me remember something that I heard. And it was from a speaker at a conference that I attended earlier this year. And he said this, I never make time for my family. I want you to think about that. How is this guy in ministry and he never makes time for his family? This is ludicrous. It doesn't make sense. But I want you to think about it again. I want to say it again, actually. I never make time for my family. Now, let me ask you this. Why should we make time for our family? My son doesn't go, hey, daddy, do you want to play with me? I don't go, hold on, son. Let me look at my calendar. Um, how does Friday at 1230 sound to you? But I could only do it for 15 minutes because I have another appointment. So I could pencil you in, uh, but I'll let, your ad I'll let my admin give you a call and let you know for sure if that's possible. No, we don't do that. We should never make time for our family. Our family should be our priority and not a nuisance. The Israelites saw Goliath as a problem, but David have a, had a different perspective than them. David saw an opportunity to let God show up. I wanna challenge you to change your perspective and not look at this house arrest or the restrictions that we're on as a, as, as a problem, but I want you to see this as an opportunity to invest into your family. When was the last time you turned off all the cell phones, the iPads, the TVs, and played a board game with your family? When was the last time you had a family devotional? When your kids grow up, are they gonna remember being bored out of their mind? Or are they gonna have these wonderful memories of how much fun they had during this season? Or what about to all the husbands out there? When was the last time you worked on your marriage? Go and buy your wife some flowers. Cook for her. If you can't cook, at least order some DoorDash. It's not too late to spark something that is dying. We can either be like the Israelites and see a problem, or we can be like David and have a different perspective and see an opportunity. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for today. God, I thank you not for this problem, but for this opportunity for us to be better husbands, for us to be better spiritual leaders, for us to be better family members. Lord, I pray, God, that we would wake up looking for new opportunities to be better to the people that we love most. And God, I pray that through this, we will not forget to put you first. So Jesus, I ask, God, that you would change our perspective on how we see things. God, it would not be a problem anymore, but God, it would be an opportunity for you to have your way and intervene. God, we ask you. God, we can't do this without you. Lord, we know that you can do miracles and that you are still in the miracle business. So Jesus, we just ask you, God, have your way. Give us creative ideas. In your name, we pray. Amen. Well, guys, I want to leave you with this verse and a challenge, and it's found in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. And it says this, Make the most of every opportunity in these days of evil. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Ask God what the Lord wants you to do, what he's speaking to you right now. God has given you an opportunity, so make the most of it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'm praying that everyone stays safe. Bye.